do 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 with Mr. Greg! Hi boys and girls! Today I'm going to show you how to draw three different types of trains. Freight trains, bullet trains, and steam trains. They're all pretty easy. Are you ready? Let's get started. The first thing you'll do is draw a straight line with a ruler so it'll act like your track. Your track will need to be straight so that the train can go without hitting too many bumps. <laughs> Each train is going to have four different wheels, except for the steam locomotive, which has five. But for the most part, we're looking at four different wheels. The spacing between your wheels does matter, so please take the time to do it correctly. The space between each car is narrower than the space between the wheels when it's on a single car. You'll see what I mean when I draw in the cars. The cars, for the most part, are the shape of a rectangle and they start with a flat bottom. Is it starting to look like a train yet? Maybe not quite yet, but it will, I promise. Now you can see I'm putting a rectangle between those circles. That is where they carry equipment. It's also where things like fuel is stored. Trains like the one I'm drawing right now are run on what is called diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is sort of like gasoline and um, it takes things very, very far. Old trains like steam trains were run on steam, which means they had to burn wood or coal to produce energy, enough energy to get the train to move. Now, after you get all of your rectangles created for the cars, for the engine, you're gonna draw it a little different. You'll see I draw up and then figure out how far over I need to go for that windshield. Now, just like your car has a windshield, trains have windshields so that the driver can see out of it and uh, know where they're at. You're gonna have to connect your train uh, so that it pulls the thing behind it. Okay, let's try another one. To do the one I'm going to show you next, which is called a bullet train, you're gonna have to think about it like this. Bullet trains are very fast. And because of that, they're very low to the ground. Everything about them is a little smaller than a freight train. Freight trains are carrying thousands and thousands of pounds of coal or whatever their freight is. As far as bullet trains go, they're carrying people. So everything's a little lower to the ground and they have very small wheels. Now, their wheels are spaced out just like a freight train. They have spaces in between. Uh, one thing that's very different about bullet trains than freight trains is they are pretty sleek, which is a fancy word for saying fast looking. The air flows over them, so the front of them is very angled. The back of them is very angled too. So when you draw your uh, train, decide on how tall you want to make it. Mine is very short and then angle back. You'll see I use a little bit of a curve and then I connect that curve to the top. Same with on the front, I do it like that. So this bullet train can go forward or backwards and it's very fast, way faster than a car. Not as fast as a, tr as a plane, but faster than a car for sure. So you can get where you're going. Now, the space in between the front and the back, you can make it as many cars as you want. Just remember, four wheels per uh, car. Now, as far as the um, windows go, uh, you can put on as many as you want. You can decorate it however you want. You could write words on it, whatever, put doors on it. Maybe even put things on the roof. You choose. Now, it will have a windshield in the front just like the freight train has, and it'll have a windshield in the back because like I said, sometimes they go forward and sometimes they go backwards. Let's do another train and uh, try an old style train this time. This is what's called a steam train. Steam trains are what we see on most cartoons. Uh, they start out with big wheels. <laughs> Uh, the, the big wheels in the back, 
um, of the locomotive are about twice the size as the wheels on the front of the locomotive. So you're gonna draw two or three big ones and then two small ones, followed by a triangle. And I think that's called the scoop. I'm not sure, but I think that used to uh, prohibit it from uh, getting derailed by running into things. So it would scoop up things that were in the way, maybe like a tree or anything else that might have been in the way. Now, after the triangle, I put on a couple rectangles and pretty soon it starts to look like a train. There are some things about a steam engine train that make it different than any other type of train. They have uh, what is called the steam pipe, right? Or the steam pipe on a lot of them were triangular. Um, and then they have that little curve in the front uh, to make it look more 3D, you'd put that in. Now, if you're somebody who likes to color a lot, you're gonna wanna put in more detail. I'm leaving mine pretty basic because um, my coloring style, I like to have big, big areas with lots of um, strong color. If you like to have more little details, you can. On steam engines, uh, behind them needed to be the coal car and the coal car or the car that was carrying all the logs for wood to burn uh, to power the train lived behind it. So uh, you can see the wheels are smaller. There's four of them and the back of that train car was angled so that they could um, load the coal in easier. And uh, again, I'm going to do a couple more cars. You guys can watch that and then I'm going to color it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It, it shows a lot of different types of trains, trains over the years. And I'm sure um, as we get older and as um, the future comes around, trains will change again. It, they'll always be changing because they're a very useful thing. They get us from place to place. They get our things from place to place. And even better, they're easy and fun to draw. Okay, I hope you had fun and I'll see you on the next video.